Hey everyone, welcome back to another 6.5 on the road here at Evolve NYC 2022, brought to you by Cloudera, IBM, and Intel. I'm Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst, Founding Partner at Future and Research, joined by my colleague, Patrick Moorhead, more insights and strategy. Patrick, what a day. No, I know it's been great. It's so good to get back on the road again. I mean, and go to an event where we can be super active I've met customers, I've met a lot of executives from Cloudera, and I actually gave part of the, uh, the keynote today, which was, uh, which was fun. But you know, every, you know, I know analysts won't admit this, but I learn something every time uh, I go somewhere. I might not give attribution to that person, but uh, you know, that's, that's supposed to be a joke, so. Oh, no, no, I got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting to see if I got some. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. But no, it was great to see you actually up on stage. We've been close for eight years. We started out our relationship at 2014, Dell Technologies World, hosting it together. You know, that was the first time I've ever seen you give a solo presentation on stage. How about that? And it's not because you don't do them. It's just because I refused to watch. But okay. I was here, I had to do it. No, in all seriousness, Front row good too. job. You kicked off for some really great thinkers for CEO of Cloudera, Rob Bairdin, uh, for our friend Rob Thomas yeah. from IBM, who also did a great job. We had Wordle there. I did Wordle, we had Wordle, but we have a great conversation. Actually, this is the last one. So if you're chronologizing this thing, this is the last, I think we had seven today. Yeah. Um, great conversations. Data is the theme. Evolve the conference, uh, uh, you know, all about evolving our, our data strategies and structures. We've got two great thinkers here. So with that, I'm gonna introduce the boss. I'm gonna introduce Luke. Welcome to the show. Love for each of you just to give a quick hello and tell everyone what you do for Cloudera. Yeah, Abbas, I'm responsible for corporate strategy. I'm the chief strategy officer at Cloudera and I'm based out of Seattle. Excellent. And I'm Luke Roquet. I run product marketing, but I've been with Cloudera slash Hortonworks for about eight years, primarily in a sales function. So I, I moved into product marketing specifically to address our messaging and go-to-market strategy. This is great. I mean, I'm so old. I've had both your jobs. This is, this is, this is awesome. Yeah, uh, a sales no. guy running product too. No, I, I, I love I, that. No, no I, I mean, is. I'm a sales guy, so. I, mean, all, I, I was in the field as well, so, and I was at Hortonworks as well. So, yeah. I started with carrying a bag, so maybe there's something about selling and there moving is, to other yeah. things that had been, no, seriously, it's great to have you here. And I think that what we'd like to talk about here are data architecture trends and you know, I, hopefully it's obvious by now that in, the infrastructure is hybrid, okay? I mean, I've been on a, you know, a, a, a holy, you know, um, tour uh, talking about this. I never run into a customer who says that's not the case, right? Uh, maybe a, a new startup or something like that, but uh, for the companies that, that you serve, uh, the larger folks with a ton of data, they certainly have always been believers, but, but the tech really wasn't there. And fundamentally, if you buy into hybrid architecture, you have to have a hybrid data architecture as well. So maybe I'm leading the witness here, but Abbas, maybe we'll start with you on how is this changing? What are the trends out there that are influence, influencing it? Yeah, sure. So it's funny, I just came off a panel talking about this as well. So there are three primary trends that we see. Number one, there's a recent report that came out from McKinsey which says in the next 18 to 24 months, up to 90, in that case, 91% of the organization surveyed, they have a plan to implement modern data architectures. The definition of modern data architectures vary, but the two common things that have come out is one is a data fabric and they need that because they want to have a unified layer for security governance, metadata governance. But then the second one is data mesh because they want to have the ability for their data practitioners to treat data like a product. And for simplistic terms, what we're talking about is having Lego blocks that you can plug and play and accelerate use cases and go from delivering hundreds of use cases back in the day to thousands of use cases and you do that at a price point of your choosing. But summarizing all of that is also the lake house trend that we've all seen coming through which in simple terms is multifunction analytics or lifecycle analytics at scale. And that's something that we as Clatter or Hortonworks have been doing that for the better part of the decade. But it's just become mainstream and there have been more feature function capabilities that have been added to that. So in terms of, you know, as you're sort of seeing all this proliferate, you know, we're seeing architectures change. That was a big theme of the day. I keep referring back to Pat telling us all our cloud sucks. <laughs> um, 
you know, so here we are, you know, we're sort of at this event, you're thinking about this. How do you, you know, you said messaging is sort of your focus yeah. when we talked about this as a, as a sales guy. How are you sort of um, messaging the, the, the story of, of the build out here and then taking it from here to implementation for the customers? Yeah, that's a good question. So I, I think part of the challenge for Cloudera is we've always offered industry leading tech specifically for neighboring the hybrid, hybrid world but the way we talked about it didn't resonate with our customers. And that's because we were trying to create our own terminology. And the reality is the industry has convalesced around data fabric, data lake house, data mesh. And for whatever reason, we had shied away from those terms. And I think part of it is because the industry itself gets confused when it talks about those terms. But what we've decided to do is embrace what the industry's talking about, clearly define what it is and how our customers can implement it, but then also to help our customers in that journey, because there's, there's so much confusion around it, specifically when you get to data mesh. Uh, data mesh is a topic that means a lot of things to a lot of people. There are clear guiding principles, but in terms of how it's implemented and how customers are successful with it, it's definitely a combination of people, process, and technology, and probably most so, so people and process. And so we're working with our customers to help them enable that future reality. So uh, we use modern data architecture, kind of throw it around, especially pundits like, uh, like myself, uh, but you're, you're on top of it, you know, f up front with customers and actually doing this. Can you talk about some, I don't know, use cases or some implementations on a so-called modern data architecture? How does that look? Yeah, sure, so I'll, I'll give it a try first. So, if we look at the people process technology, the framework that we have to understand is people includes everyone who was a data practitioner to a data builder to a data owner. Processes are all things about security, governance, documentation, all of those pieces. And then you have the technology thereof. So for majority of the customers, data mesh is that technology and the ability to take decisions in a proficient fashion using that technology as a framework is data fabric. So majority of the organizations will start with the data fabric first and they will start attacking majority of their fundamental use cases. For a retailer that can be customer 360 because recommendation engines are super important for them for coupon management and or pricing abilities. For a manufacturer, preventative maintenance on the shop floor is even more critical than some of the other use cases and they want to have the ability to have get a better understanding of lineage, governance, and the associated lineage which comes with the third party integration across multiple teams. But then when you come to data mesh, I think it's still early in terms of implementation. There's definitely a little bit of mesh washing going around. Every vendor out there is having a flavor of data mesh. They have a definition for that. But as I said, um, use cases that get accelerated because of data mesh can range all the way from a pharmaceutical or a health provider having the ability to innovate faster and also have pricing mechanisms real time to also getting to financial services companies who want to build a business within a business because that's what disoriented domain architectures allow you to do. And the goal is every LOBIT analyst can then understand the terminologies and the requirements for their LOBs and build applications thereof fast enough through a simple platform data services and data services API construct rather than having to build it all over again and rewrite the code and refactoring. But the net out of that is the two value adds that these capabilities or architectures have, data mesh definitely is time to market and it significantly improves your service. Data Fabric is definitely a risk reduction play and definitely improves on cost reduction thereof as an outcome as well. Do you want to add something? Yeah, it's just important to note because there's confusion about it. Customers wonder, should I have a Data Fabric, a Data Lake House, or a Data Mesh? Right. And it's not an or question. Yeah. It's an and question, right? So, so all three of them work interconnectedly, but they're focused on different personas in an organization. So the Data Fabric conversation is really targeted towards the CTO, the Chief Security Officer, who are really focused on governance, secure, security, controls, audit, lineage. They want to make sure that fabric's in place to manage the ecosystem. The lake house is geared towards the domain practitioner, who doesn't really care about everything else in the ecosystem except their data domain and serving up business applications, data applications on their business data. And then the third is the data mesh, which is really a more of a CDO conversation. It's about how do we take 
and enable data to transform our business? How do we monetize the data we have? How do we let different lines of business run autonomously? So these are not ex mutually exclusive terms. They're terms that our customers can and do run together. Right. And the best way to think of that, even like, is you have the platform, then you have the data fabric with observability, lineage, replication capabilities. Then you have the lake house, as Luke mentioned, which has all the data services and the engines for a lifecycle analytics. And then you have data mesh on top of that. That's like a visual representation to think of when you were to consider the total stack for any use case. That it's are. kind of the abstraction of the, you know, IaaS, PaaS, SaaS yeah. services. Yeah. This yeah. is your data version abstraction of the different data layers. Yeah. You should draw that and then use it for product. We have it actually. <laughs> um, for that. The, we missed your. We missed <laughs> that one. I didn't, I didn't yeah. see that. But uh, let me ask a strategy question. Since you have the, the strategy, you've got mesh, you've got lake house, you've got fabric. Which, by the way, I sometimes even feel like people use these somewhat interchangeably yeah, and sure. you've so you've given us kind of the how you explain them how do you get this to land how do you get customers to say a we get it and b cloudera is the company we want to get it from yeah i, th I think because we had we adhere to that what the industry analysts talk about in the definitions right we don't we're not we don't try to go and charter here's cloudera's definition of a fabric lake house mesh we you know when we talk about fabric forester is a very well-defined pizza box of what is the data fabric and so we just layer on what we do on top of that defined data fabric. Same with, we use Gartner's definition of lake house. They have a very defined, what is a lake house? What are the components? What makes a lake house? We layer onto that. And in data mesh, again, there's the, the core four principles of a data mesh that are widely accepted in the industry. But then how that looks is still, as I mentioned earlier, it's still morphing, right? So we talk to customers about data meshes. It means a lot of things. And, and we spend a lot of time here the last few days talking to customers about when you say data mesh, what does it mean to you? How do we enable a, a mesh for a bank which wants everything to be centralized and for a manufacturer which wants every LOB to have its own data platform that, that works dist distinctively? So, so data mesh is still one that, again, it's not Cloudera forcing a definition on the market. It's understanding the key principles that are established by the market and then understanding how our customers want to implement that so we can build the technology to enable it. And, and I'll add to that, which is, there was another part of your question, which is, how do you land the message and what's the differentiating factor for Cloud Era? Right, so for Lakehouse, for example, uh, first of all, we have integration with the streaming side and the CML as well, and it's purely open source because it's supported by Iceberg. But even in the data mesh space, a lot of people will say, oh, it's all about a mesh catalog. Some people will say it's much more than that because I want to use this as part of the data fabric as a technology layer. So one of the things that we're saying is that A, we're agnostic to the cloud provider of your choice. B, we're agnostic to the platform and or workload deployment form factor of your choice because you have the ability to deploy wherever you want at the price point that you want. And then lastly, if you combine all of those pieces, we want to make sure that you have the ability to uh, not only accelerate your use cases through the deployment form factor, but also you can integrate it with your existing systems. It's not a rinse and replace mechanism. It's just an ability to accelerate use cases uh, thereof. Yeah, so look, there's a lot of moving uh, pieces going on here, because not only are you transitioning from uh, on-prem to uh, CDP cloud, you also have CDP one yeah. that also hits a, a broader activity. At the same time, you're educating people on you know, the difference between uh, uh, fabric and lake house and, and every variation in between. You don't necessarily have the industry agreed. Now, you know, we have our own definitions, yeah. uh, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take that uh, Forrester and, uh, <laughs> and Gardner have good definitions too, but, but no, really, hey, I really appreciate the time that you've spent with us, and if nothing else, I'm hoping, and, and I know this will give your customers, your partners, a better idea of how you make the decisions that you make and a peek into the future of, of where we're looking when it comes to modern uh, data architecture. And we'd love to have you guys on the show again to kind of give us an update, maybe six months, maybe a year. Uh, tell us how it's going. I mean, there, you know, we had a great conversation with uh, Rob Bearden uh, and it's amazing what the company has accomplished in, in the last uh, two years. He shared some financials uh, live here, which uh, I was really happy that, uh, that he did that. He doesn't that. have to. No, he doesn't yeah. have to, but it's good to see that, you know, even in a time where you're coming in to make those investments uh, to go cloud and to go SaaS, uh, you're still a very profitable company. So 
that looks great for the future and it looks like huge opportunities for the company. So thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us and thank you for hosting. Thank you very yeah. much. So this is Pat Moorhead with the 6.5 signing off here with Luke and Abbas and my smiley and beautiful co-host Daniel Newman signing off here from Evolve New York City Live. Take care.